everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamer. Some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. While well, we're all dealing with the the pierogi, the pierogi nitus, can't really say it because YouTube goes crazy about it. So I'm calling it the pierogi nitus. Uh, we uh, let me uh, let me entertain you all while you're staying at home because hell, I'm self quarantining as well. So. I'm going to be uh, probably putting out more videos than usual, so I hope you all enjoy what I'm doing. And uh, let's get through this epidemic together. Let's, you know, let's emerge out the other end much stronger. You know, more connected, but not physically, you know. <laughs> but anyway, so we're looking at another bite-sized horde today. Today I'm looking at a place forbidden. Now... This has a very unusually detailed options menu. I'm very happy about that. Let's see controls, mouse, hello, okay, uh, interact, E, flashlight, options, control. Why would anyone ever make crouch control? I, I hate that. Alright, so without further ado, I suppose we're just going to uh, jump right into it. Alright, what do we have? The Library of Iroboros. I'm finally here. It's almost anticlimactic to stand so easily within its walls after all those years of searching. If the rumors are true, the library contains knowledge beyond anything one might hope to find on Earth. Words of power, occult learnings, enough to transcend death. It will be mine. All of it. I just need to know where to look. Right, you know, I like the style of this. A little, little too detailed to be a PS1 game, but I definitely like the aesthetic. Books on philosophy, history, and a few stray encyclopedias. Not useful. This section contains mostly horror novels. How droll. A few volumes stand out on match and physics. On math and physics. But the rest are from more obscure wings of science. Interesting, but not what I'm looking for. Novels, science fiction and fantasy, as well as a few stray romance novels. Okay, so, what we got? A transcript. I've been having these nightmares, Doctor. I'm alone, but I don't feel alone. Not like I should. Rather, there's no one with me. But that's not to say there's nothing around. It's difficult to explain, but it is an uncomfortable feeling. Something drones low in the background all the while. I can hear snatches of whispers, but only just barely. Like, something is conversing with me just out of my range of hearing. Like, just as something is watching just out of my sight range. Everything's too still. It's wrong. I don't remember how I got there, and I can't figure out how to leave. Everything is all hallways upon hallways. Shelves of books that look like they've never been opened. Almost all of them are still, and yet I gotta get a feeling like I mustn't open any of them, whatever I do. There's a pull toward them, of course, the sense that I will learn more than I could ever hope to on Earth. But there's a danger, a vague, creeping danger, the feeling that something is very, very interested in every move I make. Who, or what it might be, I don't know. I don't know if it wants to bring me in, or if it wants me to leave. How does it end? Well, as I mentioned, there's no real way to escape. Every place I go leads to more rooms. But eventually, after a time, I I don't really hear them as so much as I feel them. Look no further. Look no further. Look no further. And then I wake, and every time I feel farther from this world. To be honest, Doctor, I hope it's all in my imagination. I hope I'm afflicted with some kind of mania. Because a place like that can't exist. Shouldn't exist. And if it does, I can only hope that no one else would be so for unfortunate as to visit it. Hmm. Let me lower this 60. It's making my graphics card go crazy. Okay. okay. Biographies. I've heard of none of these people. <laughs> Almanacs. Useless. The door is immobile. I can only imagine what strange arcane secrets lie beyond its varnished surface. Very Lovecraftian feel already. What's this? The Minister's Doom, Act 3, Scene 2. How long is this? Okay, it's not too long. 
Bernice enters, followed closely by the librarian. Bernice is breathless, looking both exasperated and slightly excited. The librarian's expression is unreadable, as per usual. Bernice, but my husband will find out about us. He won't stay out forever. Librarian, I wouldn't be so sure, my dear, but shall we retire to the living room if we're to speak of such unpleasantness as your husband? Bernice's face breaks suddenly into a grin. She grabs the librarian's hand, taking him onto the couch beside her. Bernice, fine. Then if you're to stay, I want to hear some of those secrets you've been, you keep talking about. You can't play me for the fool forever, librarian. I would never claim to do such a thing, my dear. Would you care to hear how I can stop a human heart with but a word? Bernice, goodness, that sounds dangerous, librarian. It most certainly is. I wish to hear it. Then of course, you shall. He leans close to Bernice, who closes her eyes as if expecting a kiss, but the librarian leans past her, whispering something in her ear. Bernice's eyes open wide. She gives a single jerk, a strangled groan, and goes limp, sliding off the couch. Too curious for her own good. He stands, reaching in one of his pockets to withdraw a single black case containing Bernice's wedding ring. Taking a cursory look around the room, the librarian eventually focuses on a single point on the opposite side. The librarian crosses the floor, leaves his item, and turns to leave. As he does so, the scene darkens, leaving only a single spotlight to illuminate the stage. It is fixed on the small black case, which the librarian has decided to leave sitting atop the minister's writing desk. Hmm. What's this? A partial history of the library. The library of Ouroboros wasn't so much built as it simply came to be. That much we've been able to glean from the early murky tales about a certain endless structure rich in occult knowledge. The first tale was penned by an, by an unnamed Gaelic mystic, who compiled a variety of accounts from travelers complaining of strange dreams. Many of these travelers' accounts of the place were the same endless hallways of strange materials, magic devices that seemed to give off light or sounds without any visible source, but rarely were there many tangible details, aside from these characteristics and the font of knowledge ringing from ringing the walls of the place. This, of course, changed in approximately 670, when the mystic was visited by a lone woman. She was reportedly wild-eyed, half-mad, and complained of dreams much the same as her fellows, but she claimed that these dreams became reality, briefly, and that she at one point even visited that bleak place. She claimed to run into a dark, amorphous figure with a score of glowing red eyes. This figure apparently spoke to her, promising her black knowledge that should... That should her, promising her black knowledge, should she only pledge herself to it. Though the mystic asked how this woman escaped such a place, the woman gave him no, no explanation. In fact, she spoke no further, withdrawing from the mystic's hut to begin her traveling anew. She was never seen or heard from again. This testimony is hardly a concrete example of the library's existence, but it certainly makes one wonder. If tales like this, if tales like this could exist from the earliest days of modern man, what other truths could lie buried deep in the past? Should one be willing to tunnel through the cobwebs of years to reach the ancient tales hidden beneath? This is very good writing. On the Founder. They came to the Domain, a blank canvas in the cosmos, from places unknown in oldest time. They have existed longer than man, longer than the sentient stones of Ur, longer than the cosmic forces that runs through all things. They have always been. They saw the ruin that coursed through the, the, through the universe, the constant in and out of in and out flux of entropy. And with entropy went items of worth, and it was that worth that they sought to salvage. Not things, ideas, thoughts, power intangible. Through the years they reached, they searched, <coughs> sorry, through the years they reached, for their powers were immense. Through eons they snatched up secrets, dark and light, but it wasn't long before it all became too much, even for those ancient. The remaining pages have been torn out of this book, and their place is a single piece of lined paper, with an untidy scrawl standing upon it in red ink. The key to go further could have been deciphered from the last word in each of these books, but I tore them out. I couldn't let anyone else go any deeper. Sorry, but trust me, it's better this way. As you close the book, you make out a single word scratched but not, scratched, not written into the inner cover. Your predecessor must have missed it, or else it was made after the note was placed telephone. Alright, time to go take a look at the telephone. Alright. Ooh, what do we... Oh, I like how it's still attached. That's cool. What am I looking for? Hmm... Let's uh, try this again. What 
am I looking for? What can there be? Damn phone, what secrets doth thou contain within? Like, seriously, this is a little annoying. Eh, whatever. Why would I leave? I've only just arrived. Locked. Okay, what am I supposed to do then? I can't get through. Oh! Welcome message. From all our staff, welcome. We're glad you're here. As we're sure you're aware, the, the library of Ouroboros is located in a picturesque part of Britain, atop a grassy knoll east of Sussex. Many rural townships, obvi obviously bereft of their own libraries, refer their li villagers to the library. It is believed, it is beloved by all. Sorry guys, my throat's a little dry. We hope you'll take your time per perusing our vast stores of literature. Non-fiction, fiction, occult knowledge, cursed knowledge, words to melt the eyes of anyone who reads them. Psalms of murder, and otherwise. You certainly have the time enough, Bernard. You certainly have time enough. Oh! A copper key, huh? Alright, what does this go to? Ooh. That book mentioned my name. A coincidence. Nothing more. Besides, it was mistaken. The library wasn't in England. I found it in the German city of Ulburg, sequestered away behind an ancient church. Uh, such a small, unassuming front. As if by looking so plain, it might hide from the rest of the world. Hmm. Uh, hello? Okay. It's a lot of books. Can't read any. Seems I can't read any of these currently. That's fine. That's fine. These are just for show. What is this? You're an avid reader, aren't you, Bernard? You can't read these books, but don't fret. They'll pave your road to new knowledge. If you're stuck, think of yourself like a cataloger or a librarian. That has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? The case toward the, the case toward the window seems as good a place as any to start. Hmm. I think I'm gonna play this through the f the full length. Kind of don't want to cut these bite-sized horror games short anymore. They'll still be called bite-sized. A frigid scene. There was no fog outside earlier. Huh. Ooh. Oh. Interesting. Hmm. Ooh. It says a. There must be a key over here. Where the damn key at? The case towards the window seems as good a place as any to start. The hell? Okay. Hmm. The case towards the window. What case, though? The book case towards the Like, I'm already over here. Like, I've, I've looked over here. What, what am I searching for? Probably a key of some kind. Oof. I like this game, but... Man, I hate that the crouch key is... One, two, three... Bingo. Cracked it. Oh, hold up. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Wait a bloody minute. Every time I turn around, this seems like it's changing. 
Hmm. Well, guys, I may have actually hit a snag. I don't know what to do. This game is making me feel like an idiot, but the low-poly style certainly is making it hard to see where a fucking key might be. <sighs> Case towards the window seems as good a place as any to start. Okay. Case. What does that say? Does it say anything? No. No, I... Wait a minute, how many books? Alright, one, two, three, four. Okay, there's four. Four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Four, six. One, two, three, four, five. Four, six, five. Four, six, five, three. Okay. Oh, shit. I got it. <laughs> oh, big brain, big brain. Okay. Picked up a screwdriver. All right. Uh, I heard, I never felt threatened by a chair before. <laughs> That's a weird thing to say. Huh. That is weird. Oh. is waiting for me in this. Let's see. Oh. Goodness. All right. Anything in these? Nope. Oh, what are you? Ooh. Oh, my God. How is this possible? There's a library. Picked up, you'll regret it, you'll regret it, you'll re Something is wrong. Oh dear. I need to leave now. Oh shit. Endless, it's endless. Something is scratching its way into my head. Oh no. You picked up a your mind. <laughs> I want more! Oh, God, that was so good. Oh, God, that was so good. Oh, I want to see more of that. Oh, man. Oh, these guys need to set up, like... 
these guys need to set up like a funding page. This is fantastic. I I so do enjoy Lovecraftian games that take their time. This this is great. There were no jump scares. There was just like a creeping sense of dread, which is Lovecraftian horror done right. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I certainly did. Uh, I really like this game. Uh, try checking it out as part of the uh, PS1 demo disc on itch.io. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that little notification bell. The Doom Eternal videos are going to be coming out soon. I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe. Bye-bye.